Hi, I'm Bob Al Simply Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to be producing a face shield that might be used in the healthcare industry. This has got some real fixturing challenges. A lot of people don't realize the flexibility having a Shop Saber CNC router does for your company. If you're a non-CNC shop, you're pretty much locked in to the talents of the people you have. Let's say the marketplace changes and all of a sudden the product that you've been making is in no demand, so you've either got to find something else to make to keep the doors open or close the doors. Let me give you a case study. Look at the exhibit industry. So you have trade show exhibits. When people quit attending trade shows, exhibitors quit exhibiting and you don't get the calls for the orders. So you have to make a decision on what to do and the CNC router gives you the strength or ability to actually select another product and get into it fairly quickly. We're gonna take a really good example of this in this video and that's the face shields that the healthcare industry uses. We're actually gonna select a design, we're gonna set the machine and we're gonna make them. Now let's get started. Started. This is a design I finally settled on, and it's funny, I downloaded it from our Saber Nation group. One of our uh, users actually uploaded this, and I'll tell you why I liked it. Now, there's other sources for these drawings. Uh, there's some open source stuff. Uh, a healthcare facility in your area may have some approved designs that they want to use, so those are all places you can get that. Now, so here's what I started with. This is actually, I call it a ring. This goes around your head. Now, what these are, these little hooks, basically, uh, you put a rubber band on there. My head's large enough, it doesn't matter, but if you have a smaller head, you can put a rubber band on here and that tightens that. Okay, this is a slot up here that the shield goes through and then this is the shield itself. So that's what we started with. Now, I made some alterations to the drawing because I was using slightly different material and slightly different tooling. And I'll kind of show you what I changed. For one thing, uh, I changed this area because I... I wanted to cut this out with a larger tool and I couldn't I, I couldn't use that small a tool to just to cut out. So what I did was I turned this into a loop and that into a loop. So that was a separate tool path. This got roughed out with a, a larger bit. And same thing, I, I redesigned the slot a little bit because of tooling. And then the material I was using for uh, for the ring is a half inch thick, so I had to change this geometry, and then this material is 40 thousandths polycarbonate. So that's basically what I did once I selected the drawing. This is one of our finished parts, and this I call a ring, but let's take a look at it. It's got these little narrow pieces here, and it, it's really uh, hard to hold with vacuum. But here's how we can do that. If we leave the material in the middle here connected, then that becomes a much larger part, and we can hold that with flow through vacuum. All right, so then when we tool path, the first thing we're gonna do is rough this out, and we're actually going to use a quarter inch bit because the material's half inch. We're gonna do two passes, and I'm gonna leave an onion skin of about 30 thousandths, so that still becomes one connection. Then we put the eighth inch tool in it and we machine these little notches where the bands go and then we cut the slot out for the face shield. Then we come back out here and we go around and do a finished pass on the outside and we cut all the way through and then we come back to the inside and we do a finished pass but this time we reduce the onion skin to 10 thousandths. That should do it. Now let's look at the, the actual shield itself. It's actually much simpler. This material is 40 thousandths of polycarbonate. Uh, it's got a couple ears of machined here. There's a there's a dog bone in the corner here. And then inside here, this is a, a piece of geometry that attaches to the ring itself, and so that's cut out. And that's pretty much the two parts we have to make. This is the drawing I finally settled on, and I'll show you the changes I made. First off, I, I wanted to cut these little slots for the rubber bands with an eighth inch tool, so that's what those. That gave me the ability to do a separate tool path, and that's this one and this one. Also, I wanted to cut the outside, not cut all the way through, and so I created this tool path, and basically that keeps this connected here. And then in the final pass, I wanted to cut uh, the inside of this, and once again, we left that 10 thousandths onion skin. I made one other change, and that was down here in, in, in our material is 40 thousandths, and so, I opened this up a little bit because it was really hard to assemble it. And, and uh, 
and what I discovered is there's there's flex in that uh, material, so the flex keeps it pressed up against here. So you just have to have room to get slide it through there, so that this can lock into that little little pocket that's in the uh, in the shield. So that's basically what I did. Now let's let's look at a simulation. I'll show you. So the first thing that happens is the outside rough passes get made. And that was that was that that's a quarter inch tool with two passes and it left thirty thousandths. Okay, then I switched to a smaller tool and cut those slots. Okay, and the, and the little hooks. So that was those tool passes. Then I was ready to do the outside finishing. This is an eighth inch tool. Now that cut uh, all the way through, and then the same tool on the inside. I cut that, but I left 10 thousandths. Once again, the idea was to leave a thin enough material that it would be easy to cut with an X-Acto knife, but thick enough to keep the middle from moving around, and that worked out really, really well. All right, here's the actual shield drawing, and I, and I wanted to kind of tell you, in terms of tooling, how I dress something like this. If it's materials you're not used to using, I call Vortex, tell them what I'm trying to do, and get their recommendation. And the first thing they told me was, on this thin material, you need a straight cutter, not an up shear, down shear. And so I decided, well, I want to use the 316s and, and try to keep the cutting edge as short as you can get by with. The shorter, the better, all right? But in this inside here, this has to fit that, uh, that part of the ring, and I needed an eighth inch tool to do that. And so I used an eighth inch tool. Now, let's look at the simulation on this. Okay, the first thing that happens is this pocket gets roughed out with the 3 16 and once again, you don't see the dog bones because um, they can't get in those corners. And then we cut the outside, once again, that's the 3 16 and then we come back finally, and we clean this up, and that smaller tool, you see it adds the dog bones to it. And that's really all that was required for this. All right, now once I had actually done a prototype of the, the ring part and the face shield, then I nested those on a sheet, because I wanted to cut 12 of them, and the material is about four feet wide. And on the machine, it actually, um, I just used the front zone, because I put all the back in there, and it worked out pretty good. Now let me show you, one of the things, if you, if you notice when we cut, we actually cut these front two ones, and we did that first, and we did that so we could leave the dust collector shroud off, and you could see the cutting, and that's what this tool path does. So let, let's look at the simulation. Okay, once again, the first thing we did the outside roughs, and then we did the slots, and the, what I call the band hooks, and then the outside finish, and the inside finish. So that was, a when you see it cut, that was the first cut. Once again, we did that to get a closer camera angles too. Then we actually ran that again and did everything but those two. So those are the two files that you see. Now here's the nest of the shields. Once again, there's there's 12 of those, and we really didn't didn't separate those out, and we just cut all 12 of them. And once again, the material is about 48 this way, so I ran the front two vacuum zones. And let's take a look at the simulation. First thing we did, once again, we ran those little, the, the large pockets, then we cut the outsides, and we went back into each of those pockets and tightened them up. And that's really all it took. Now we have our tool pathing completed. Let's go over to the machine and run these parts. The half inch PVC material was placed on the flow through vacuum table, and the front vacuum zone was activated.
Once the vacuum pump is turned off, the rings can be removed from the vacuum table. Our next operation is to machine our nest of 12 shields. The shields can be removed from the table and the parts can now be prepared for final assembly. All right, this is what our part looks like when it comes off the machine and one side has this protective foam so let's get rid of that first. That just peels off. and we really don't have to worry about this inside because it's gonna be cut away. Now, if I hold that up to the light, you can see that there's an eighth inch groove and it's, it's almost all the way through. The thickness of that's about 10 thousandths of an inch. So the easiest way I found to get rid of that is to take an X-Acto knife and, and basically just go around the inside. It doesn't take much to cut through that. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're not worried about that right now. Okay. So now that cuts that loose so we can get rid of this. Now what we have is we have this little edge here of the plastic that's about 10 thousandths thick. This is a deburring tool like they use in a machine shop and we can just run the deburring tool on there and that cleans that up and it works like a dream. In fact, this also works when you're making parts out of starboard. Leave a film and then just deburr it. So it does a really nice job. Now I will say it does take a little practice to get really good at the deburring, but it certainly works. So that's really all it takes to get that part ready to go. We'll set this aside, then our other part, the shield, all we really have to do is remove the plastic on it. So I've got a corner started. Just pull that off one side, and then pull it off the other side. So now we've got both of our parts ready, and there's our shield. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. This project illustrates the flexibility a Shop Saber CNC router can bring to your company. It actually allows you to enter totally new markets. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.